In this video, we're going to talk about dividend discount model and how it could be used to value a firm and find a firm's share price. So when we think about a dividend discount model, it's it's a good idea to kind of think conceptually that we've got a firm, and what we can do is view this firm as a stream of dividend payments into the future for into infinity. We'll just say it's, it's in perpetuity. We're just thinking forever this firm is just going to spit out uh, dividends. Let's say it's ten dollars, ten dollars each year. It's just going to have $10, or maybe this number is growing. Uh, maybe it's $10, and then $12, and then $14. W whatever the case, we're somehow uh, valuing uh, this, this stream of dividends going forward and saying, okay, how can we discount those dividends and, and just basically value the firm uh, based on these dividends that, that we're expecting to occur. So we've got uh, one way that's the, the most popular way of uh, valuing the firm with a, a dividend discount model. Uh, it's called the Gordon Growth Model. So this Gordon Growth Model, uh, it's, it's actually a very simple equation. Uh, we're just going to have the, the P, the firm's share price, uh, that's going to be equal to the dividends in the next period, dividend per share on an annual basis in the next period. Uh, and then that's going to be divided by the cost of equity after subtracting the growth rate that we're expecting for the dividends. And so uh, let me just let me just talk about these in a little bit more detail. Uh, so we've got P, that's the share price, right? So ultimately that's what we're trying to solve for and say, okay, well, how much is this firm worth uh, on a per share basis? Uh, and then when we've got the D1, we're looking at the dividends per share next year. Uh, and then the G is just that growth rate. Do we think that these uh, dividends, are, are they going to grow at a rate of 3%, 5%, 4%? What do we expect to happen uh, as those dividends go off into the future? Uh, what do we think is going to happen? How are they going to grow? Uh, and then, of course, we've got our cost of equity uh, that we can just we can solve for actually uh, if it's not given in your problem uh, you can just go ahead and solve for that using the capital asset pricing model uh, so let's go ahead and let's let's work through uh, in an example here let's see if I have enough space to do it here so you can still see uh, our equation so let's say that that you have a firm and, and you're trying to come up uh, with a valuation and in this example firm You've got dividends per share of next year. So next year, dividends per share. Uh, let's say that they're $2 a share. So I'll just change it. $2 a share you expect to be dividends for, for next year. Not this year, next year. Okay, so now we've got that. We say, okay, well, what's what's the cost of equity? Uh, the cost of... It's, put that there. So the cost of equity, let's assume uh, that that's 12%. And then what do we have for the growth rate? Well, now we've, we've got to make an assumption here, right? So it, let's just assume that the growth rate of these dividends in perpetuity is going to be 3%. Now, it's, now the rest is pretty simple because we just use our equation uh, and, and we plug in these numbers that, that we were given here. Uh, so we can go ahead and, and calculate for a share price. So actually, I'll do it, uh, I'll do it up here. Okay, so now we just have our price is going to be equal to, and we've got the $2 per share divided by, and then in the denominator we're going to have the 0.12, that's our the cost of equity, and then we're going to subtract out that growth rate, which is 0.03. This is all in the denominator. Ultimately, we're going to have 2 divided uh, by 0 0.09, which is going to give us a share price, uh, now this is rounded, of $22.22 a share. So this is the share price of this firm. Okay, now we might say, okay, well, what are some issues with it? If it's this easy to value a firm, then why are people paying analysts uh, a great deal of money to, to go ahead and value a firm if all you have to do is uh, make some estimates and, and calculate this simple equation? Uh, well, there are a few caveats here that are very important that, that we don't want to forget about. Now, first of all, when you're calculating this growth rate of dividends, uh, you have to see you're you're assuming this is a constant growth rate, 
right? You're assuming every year forever that the firm's dividends will grow at 3%. Now, that's a pretty big assumption, right? I mean, in reality, uh, at some point, the dividends uh, might not grow. They might not grow at all. The firm might uh, just say, well, we're not going to uh, increase our dividends anymore, and the shares outstanding doesn't change. There's a lot of things that could happen, uh, and we don't have to get into all of them, but the idea is that this is, this is very unlikely to actually take place. Um, and, if, of course, it's not even possible that the firm, it's very likely the firm's not going to exist uh, much less forever, but maybe even a hundred years from now, this firm might not even be existing. Uh, so, so we're, but we're assuming this constant perpetual growth rate, which might not is very likely not to be very realistic. So it's kind of a rough estimate. Uh, and kind of another problem is, what if the firm uh, is not paying dividends? So what if what if we have a firm uh, like Twitter, or some or some kind of some kind of firm that maybe maybe it's a uh, in in IPO, maybe we're trying to value a firm uh, that is just about to be offered uh, to have its shares offered to the public for the first time. The firm has never paid dividends. Uh, it's it's kind of a growth firm. You know, we expect the firm to be taking money and investing in new projects, not paying out dividends. Uh, so so then this this becomes even more problematic of trying to estimate uh, the dividends. Um, you know, so this is something a lot easier for a mature firm that's paying dividends and isn't really in that that growth stage anymore. Um, of course, you could use you know, some kind of proxy uh, for dividends. You could say like, okay, well, if it's a growth firm, instead uh, we'll we'll use uh, earnings per share as a proxy. But then, okay, well, but earnings per share isn't the same as dividends. So now we're getting even uh, further from what we're trying to do. And so ultimately, it's it's just important to, to bear in mind that as easy as this calculation is, and how it spits out this uh, nice, uh, easy to understand share price, and it just takes a few minutes to do this. Ultimately, it's built on a lot of assumptions, uh, and so you should uh, you know just bear those assumptions in mind when you're thinking that you have a valuation based on the dividend discount model.